Hey everyone, welcome to Johnny How To. So in a very recent video, I was talking about how you can limit the area that you have to worry about as far as the green screen by using a garbage mat, but not just any garbage mat, a dynamic garbage mat. So what I mean by that is if I have a key light and I start to key, say, the screen right part of Robert's hair over here, I still have a lot of green screen left over everywhere else and I still need to do some work here, but overall you can see there's a whole lot to do. So in the previous video, if you want to check it out, I'll link to that. I did this very simple setup and what it basically does is it cuts down dramatically on the area you need to worry about for your green screen. Now this works great for the outside of the area that you want to key, but if we go ahead and darken down the viewer here, you can see that I still have plenty of transparent areas that are still left on Robert and Eddie here. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about how you can make a dynamic in mat or holdout mat in this particular video. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll just select these guys. I'll do, uh, well, let's go ahead and uh, manually disconnect them right here. And I'll just put these guys off to the side so I can use them a little bit later on. And so I have my key light right here that I've started to key the screen right part of Robert's hair. It's still a lot of a way to go, but the main thing right now is I need to adjust the interior of their mats so they're not transparent. And of course, depending on what type of key you're using, in this case, I'm using a key light, you can of course use the adjustments and tools inside the node to try and push that towards white. Or if you have more of the screen left, you can try and clip the black to get rid of it so you can have a clean mat. The problem, of course, is that as you push those values, say I try and get a completely black background and I try and get a completely white interior, as you push those values, you're also starting to affect in a negative way the edges that you're working with. So I'm going to go ahead and just temporarily put these guys on the background for this key light and I'll go ahead and set the view from final result to composite. And if I zoom in here, you're gonna be able to see very easily that this is over this green background and this is the original footage. You can see I'm losing a lot of hair detail, a lot of the kind of softness that's even on what you would think of as kind of harsh or, or less soft surfaces like a shirt and the bean and everything like that. They're starting to look like you cut them out with a pair of scissors. So that's clearly not what we want to have happen. And of course that makes Robert very upset. So we don't want to do that. So anyway, let's go and talk about how we can create a interior mat. So all of the areas inside of, let me go ahead and put this back to final result. So all the areas inside of here are still all white, but without messing with our edges. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this key light. I'm going to go ahead and start over here real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new key light. So I press tab and start type uh, the word key light and make sure that's plugged into my source, which it looks like it's not right now. How dare you? Let's see. Yeah, it was source. Okay. So we'll plug that in and let's go ahead and view our shot. And I need to go ahead and click on the color picker for the key light in particular. And again, I'm just using key light because I'm using uh, dealing with hair detail and that tends to work well with that, but you can use primat whatever key you want. I'm gonna hold down Control and Alt or Command and Option on a Mac. I'm gonna click near Robert's hair, but not on it. I'll go and view the alpha channel and I can see how I have a start to this key. Now, if I go ahead and darken this down, again, like we saw before, I have this transparency in here and I don't wanna to have to push these values to clip white to get it interior because remember that's affecting my edge pixels here. So the other way we can do this is we create a key a really rough key, and then we're gonna shrink it inwards to kind of fill in the interior of Robert and Eddie. And we might need to do multiple of those, but I'll go ahead and go over the basic idea. So I'm gonna start off, just because I know it's simple and easy to use, I'm gonna use a primat node, I'm gonna plug that in the foreground input into my original footage. Now, just so I don't forget what I'm doing with this, I'm gonna go ahead and name this primat node. I'm gonna click on the node tab, and in the label, I'm gonna say this is my uh, in mat. I'll just call this a harsh key two. And the only reason I'm calling it harsh key two is in the previous tutorial, I'd already created one that I called harsh key. But I'll go ahead and set this up. And basically I want to make it to where the green is going to be completely black in the alpha channel, meaning invisible. And the characters or anything else is gonna be completely white, meaning it's gonna be completely visible. So white is visible, black is invisible. So with the primat node, the reason I chose that is you have this little auto compute button and it's going to try and give you a 
basic shot at doing a key. So I click that button, I press A for alpha, and you can see it started to get me there. It's obviously not there all the way, but it started to get me there. So I'm gonna go and brighten this up. I'm gonna go ahead and choose clean background noise, which is my green screen in this case. I'm gonna hold down Control and Shift or Command and Option if on a Mac. I'm just gonna left click and drag boxes around all these white pixels from the green screen that are left over and try and get this to be completely black and white. And I might not be able to get it all the way there, but I'm gonna try and get it as close as I can. Try not to leave, be a little bit more careful and try and grab just these spots. Okay, and if you don't happen to get every single little spot, we'll try and cover that in an extra step, but get at least as many as you can out the gate. All right, so if I go ahead and darken this down now, I can see I have all this transparency. I'm gonna go ahead and do clean foreground noise, and I'm gonna go ahead and push all of this to white, or at least all the interior pixels to white. Uh, the only areas I wanna be a little bit careful for are things that might have a lot of green on them. So for instance, if I go and look at the original footage, I might wanna make sure I'm not grabbing areas like right here because that's actual green screen or it's partially green screen. And uh, it's not the case with these glasses, but with glasses, it's very common to get like a really strong reflection on the frames of the glasses from the green screen reflecting back. And that might throw off things as well. But overall, the interior, I want to be basically all the way white. And if I go and darken this down again, I can see that I'm getting pretty close. I'll try and get the rest of this. And let's see, is that anything I need to worry about down here? Let's see, let me go and look at the original footage. Okay, so that's actually stuff that should be white. So I'll go ahead and control shift, left click and drag on that. And so I basically have a really grungy, ugly key for these guys in the shot, and I'm, I'm not gonna worry about the pole here for now. It's not something I wanna use to cut out and put on a new background, but it is gonna help me fill in the gaps in my actual key. So I'll call this key light over here that remember I started at the very beginning that I'm using for the screen right of Robert. So I'll call this Robert screen right or foreground guy screen right head, just so I know what I'm working with here is this area right here. So basically instead of now having to go and down my viewer and up my clip white in this key light node, which is trying to mainly the sole purpose of that is to keep these nice clean edges. Now what I can do is I say, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take this key right here, this primat, this really grungy mat, and I'm going to shrink it down and I'm gonna select that node. I'll go and press tab. I'm gonna type the word erode. And I'm gonna choose erode filter. And I only want to affect the alpha channel. So under channels, I'll select alpha. And you can see if I go positive values, it's going to shrink it down. If I go negative values, it's going to grow it out. In this case, since I wanted to fill in the inside of the characters, I'm going to shrink it down. If you watch the previous video, it's kind of the opposite. So what I need to do now is in my key, there's two ways you can apply this with a key light node. And some nodes have these inputs, some nodes don't as far as keyers, but there's this little one called NM right here that stands for in mat or inside mat. Hold out mat and inside mat are kind of interchangeable terms. So if I wanted to use this to fill in these areas right here, I can use my in mat, plug it into this little section right here. I'm gonna name this just so I don't forget. I'm gonna select these nodes, type backdrop and actually select backdrop. I'll go and call this my in mat. All right, so with that plugged in, you're like, okay, well, that's not doing anything, John, really, really nice. What you need to do here is in your actual key light node, you have different options down here for out mat and in mat. So the in mat is gonna fill the inside of the characters. So I'm gonna go ahead and under in mat, I'm gonna set that to alpha. And you can see that kind of automatically fills in these areas. And how far or how close to the edges it's going to get is dictated by what this value for your erode filter node is. So you do, you typically want to add a slight blur to this. So I'm going to go ahead and add a blur node. I'll select my filter row, B for blur. All I want to blur is the alpha channel and I'll add a very slight blur. It might just be like, you know, well, it depends on your resolution completely. If you have 4K to make it noticeable, you have to do more. If it's 1080 less, if it's 720 less, but let me, I'll go ahead and do just a couple pixel blur just so it's not super razor sharp. And then I can go ahead and use the filter road to figure out how far I want this to go. So the main thing I don't want to have happen, if I go ahead and view my key light and I go and go back to viewing my normal 
view with the luminance is I don't want it to fill in any of these transparent areas. I don't want it to fill in this area right here because that's going to bring back in the screen when I'm trying to get rid of it. Now again, in this particular case, this key light is just for the screen right over here. So I don't really want to, I want to try and ignore this stuff over here, but just as a, as a principle with the in mat, you don't want it to fill out edges because if I continue to do this, let's say I don't shrink this enough. You start to see that I'm filling in these pixels here. If I turn off the blur, it becomes even more apparent that I'm starting to fill out areas that I actually want to be transparent. So you kind of back off on it until you can start to see, like right here, I want that to be filled into white, but I don't want to fill in white these areas over here. So it's going to be a little bit of a back and forth. I want to make sure not to fill out areas here, so I need to, to shrink that in a little bit more. And I need to go back and forth until I find kind of what works well for the shot. And note that this is working pretty decently for Robert's hair right here, which again, all this key is for, but I can reuse this in mat in all of my other keys. The downside is that it might not work as well for other objects in the shot. So for Eddie's shoulders and stuff like that, I'm not filling in as closely as I probably could now. If I didn't have to worry, if I didn't have to worry about Robert's head here, I could probably go ahead and just say, okay, well, I can go ahead and bring this a lot closer and not have to worry about it. But for this area, now I've messed up his hair. So you might need to do multiple versions of this, maybe do one in mat just for the head and areas in the foreground or that have a lot of hair detail, then other areas for different parts of the shot. And you just splice them all together. And of course, I'll cover those in separate videos. But the big benefit of this, let me adjust this just slightly just to make sure I'm not cutting out anything I shouldn't or filling anything I shouldn't. If I go and view this normally, this looks pretty good right now. I still have a little bit of his hair that probably should be not transparent. So if I go ahead and view this, and I view his mat here. I'm guessing that probably should be completely opaque. So now I can go back and I, if I do make changes in my key light node, I can go ahead and just make very, very minor. So the clip white's now just going to be a very slight little adjustment instead of more if I had to worry about the rest of the interior, if I have to do it at all. If I can get away without having to do that at all and it looks fine on the final background, then that's all the better. So. That's kind of the basic idea of an in mat. When you combine that with your out mat or your dynamic garbage mat, you get a much better result. And I'll talk about that in a separate video. But now you can kind of see that with this going here and I view my alpha channel and I darken this down, the interior, the core interior of these guys, even if I go to different spots in the shot, is going to dynamically update and I don't have to animate that manually. So that is the basic idea behind a in mat, and this is a way that you can do one where it's dynamically updated instead of having to do it manually or some other way that's going to be a lot more tedious. So hopefully that's helpful. I'm going to go ahead and link to the out mat or the garbage mat video as well and vice versa. And when you combine those together, you can get some really, really cool stuff and I'll cover those both together in a separate video. So hopefully this particular video has been helpful and I'll see you in the next Johnny How To.